both of these guys are huge, huge 145ers. Palmer's a 6 foot 45 er Simos is nearly six foot of 5'11". Located with their booth in the back. Very nice long. Setup. That length is very Sherwin. beneficial in jujitsu. He'll hook you up. Give it a shot that you want. A new breed. Introducing your fighters. First fighter to my right. Tonight, he is out of the blue corner. Wearing the black trunks. Trimmed in bad boy white. He comes to us at exactly six feet tall. Weighing in at 145 pounds. Putting his impressive undefeated 3-0 record. On the line, on behalf of James Gray, Scorpion Fighting Systems, here is on, Zach Palmer. His opponent across the cage, man to my left. Tonight, he is out of the red corner, wearing the red, white, and blue trunks. He comes to us at five feet, 11 inches tall. He too, weighing 145 pounds, putting his four and O. Oh. Record on the line here tonight. To the reigning of Martial Arts Unlimited, who fought Raymond, here is George Simons. Say hello to Amanda, your referee in town. Simos has a huge crowd behind him. Lots of people showed out to support him. You know, it's always good to have a good fan base like that, you know. It gives you a little, little more drive, a little more umph, you know. Well, definitely. You feel like you're fighting for something more than just yourself. These boys look like they want to get at it. Very nice. At the same time, su having such a huge fan base can also be a double-edged sword because you, the pressure of trying... Oh, jumps guard. The pressure of trying to impress so many people to live up to so many people's expectations can be overwhelming at times I agree you know but I've always been that your thing you know you need to live up to your own expectations in life not everybody else's you know and um that's what makes you all day Murray you know you know <laughs> but uh I'm gonna touch on that is the second scorpion fighting system guy I've seen pull guard today you know and uh that is how confident they are with their guards in the jiu-jitsu you know and Ooh, oh big left hand Palmer drops Simos. He needs to stay busy right here. He needs to stay busy. Simos looks like he recovered pretty quick. Looks like he's okay now. That was a big shot though. Let's see if Simos uh, works some of that uh, rubber guard from his back and attempts to attack. You know, if I, if I was uh, Palmer right now, knowing that I dropped him with that punch, I will try to break that guard and get back to my feet. Most try finishing this. Most definitely. You got a guy hurt. You want to capitalize on it. But at the same time, you don't want to get too overzealous and, and uh, exert so much energy that you, uh, if you don't finish the fight, you're uh, SOL. Well, definitely. You know, but, like, you don't ever want to play in a guard with somebody from 10th Planet. You know, you want to – obviously, he had uh, good success on his feet, so I would keep it there. Most definitely. But and I think Palmer, you know, training with the likes of James Gray, he's been in this position. But he, he looks like he's being threatened with a, a triangle armbar combo right here. He needs to not let uh, triangle looks deep. He needs to not let Simon's get any space right here. He needs to stack him. That's deep. Underhooks the leg. That's deep. That's a deep triangle. This fight might be over. Wow. Palmer trying to strike, but that's so deep. You know, when you get off to that angle and you get that deep bite, what, what Simos needs to do is get off into that angle, that perpendicular angle, and finish using big, strong muscles. Staying square, which the ways, you know, the triangle's traditionally taught, it's effective, but if he can get off to that angle, he'll, I guarantee he'll finish it. I agree 100%, but Palmer, man, kudos. Oh, he's out, he's out. Wow. That was a deep triangle wow. when he got out. Impressive. Oh, that wasn't very smart. You need to keep those underhooks and go for a sweep. It helps when you have James Gray triangle you on a regular basis, you know? I would not <laughs> want to get caught in that triangle <laughs> choke. <laughs> Actually, I think I might have. <laughs> <laughs> big shots from Simos. Oh, big right hand. Effective ground and pound. Oh, nice armbar attempt. Very nice Action grappling pack. first Action round. Pack. Wow. 
excellent first round. Very exciting. Simos got dropped and then came, got close to getting finished and then came close to finishing the fight. I Back mean, and forth action. So, I mean, who'd you get that round to? You know, the fact that Palmer did drop Simos. It, it's, it, so, it's so tough. It's, one, it, it's, a, it's a coin flip at that, that point because you had Simos getting dropped and then at the same time you had Palmer in a deep, deep triangle that was, you know, equivalent of the same thing. Both guys came close to finishing the fight. I feel like both guys had remotely the same amount of control. Uh, you know, I'm, I almost want to call it a 10-10. You know, but good thing that's not possible. But <laughs> <laughs> um, that's why I talk behind the mic because I don't want to judge. And I don't want to be reporting situations to do this. Yeah, it, it, it's, it, it's easy to play, you know, um, Monday, day, Monday chair quarterback, but... I, you know, I would not want to be one of these judges, especially in a fight this close. It, it, it's so difficult to call. I agree with you on that one. And it comes back to our point about the importance of finishing fights and uh, not letting judges dictate if you win or lose. Oh, yeah. I've, I've seen some awful decisions in my day. I mean, some god-awful decisions. You know, and these fighters have been working very hard. Nice inside leg kick. Nice. It just seems like, you know, Ooh, Palmer, nice left hand again. Palmer definitely has a striking advantage, it seems like, in this fight. He looks uh, way more crisp. Yeah, more explosive, a little bit more power behind his shots. Not taking anything away from George either. You know, George does have a you know, decent, solid stand-up. Ooh. Be careful coming in with those hands down. Keeping the pressure on, though. Both guys going for broke. Excellent fight. Again with that left hand. Palmer's landing now three times with that left hand down the pipe, countering Simos as he comes in. Nice sprawl by Simos. He's gets head on the outside. And pulling guard again. Simos does not want to go to the ground. Palmer seems like he's beginning to faint a little bit. Simo still seems strong. I think this gas tank, the longer this fight come, goes on, the longer it's going to factor in. Yeah, Palmer's definitely fading quickly here. Deep breath, his mouth is open. Simo still sees the his bearings about him, stalking. That was a deep shot, but he struggling to finish it. Right here, you know, being as tired as Palmer is, you know, I got a good, we got a good body lock in. I would be breathing right now, relaxing, you know, just kind of putting pressure on him, wearing Simos out, but also resting at my own pace. Yeah, you want to make your opponent carry your body weight, make, make them carry that burden as opposed to you doing so. Except good control from here, good knees from here. You know, I do believe that, you know, Zach probably should probably try securing a takedown right here to win this round because he may need it for the third, you know. Most definitely. He's working. I don't know how much explosion he has left to put Simos on his back. He needs to do a big, big step and scoop. He's going to take down. You know, I just caught a, a glimpse of a... a UFC, or at Michigan MMA Hall of Famer, we got Mr. Oh, Ooh, Mr. James Lee, UFC and Pride veteran sitting over there cage side. We have a, a star-studded audience with you know some of the best in mixed martial arts. We have Darren Cruzshank, Ben Lagerman, Brett the Grim Rogers, James Lee. A lot of people came out to see this card, and it, you know it's a testament to uh, Mike Padanelli matchmaker uh, laying out this excellent fight card 15 strong bites six six title fights uh, you know people want to see this and uh, you know it's shown in the crowd almost definitely you know Michigan MMA has so much to offer you know and a lot of people don't give us credit you know because we're unsanctioned but I mean, if you look at it we produce some very very talented fighters out there you know most definitely and with, with organizations like WXC it's going to continue to uh, contributed to the credibility of Michigan 
uh, the, to the credibility of Michigan's amateur mixed martial arts scene. It's going to open doors for a lot of these amateur fighters who are trying to make a career out of this. And uh, this is the perfect platform to make that jump. Oh, most definitely, you know, and it's, you know, fighters, it's, like you said, it's like leagues like the WXC, you know, Prison City Fight League, TXC, TWC. It's quality promotions like that that put forth that extra effort to give us these quality shows, give these fighters something knowledgeable to fight on, you know, a, sta a good stage to fight on, opposed to, you know, these small, rinky-dink shows, you know. Most definitely you have the, the, the importance of the over but let's give it up also for these fans, these individuals who came out to uh, support their uh, their relatives, their friends, their training partners. We have a lively crowd who's uh, had the pleasure of seeing six great bouts thus far. Ooh, Palmer slips. Uh oh. You know, it, be it, trouble. It all starts Ooh, with the nice fans. Nice body you know? shots. It all starts with the fans. You know, I want to be where I'm at today. With it wasn't for my support group. You know, I have great people following me. You know, pushing me. You know, every step of the way. So. It all starts with the fans. Simos is wearing Palmer down. Vicious knees. For being a low, lower uh, amount of fights, these two are very, very talented. Very seasoned. You know, that's, that's the crazy thing about you know MMA is how it evolves. You know, you see fighters with three or four fights looking like they've had 20 multiple fights, you know, look, look, looking better than some pro fighters, you know. And, and you know, if it, like you said, it's a testament to the evolution of the sport. I can remember back in the uh, mid-90s to the late 90s, you know, fighters were extremely one-dimensional. The fact of the matter is this is mixed martial arts, mixed martial arts. You can't just be a one-dimensional fighter because sooner or later you're going to run into a guy who's going to best you. And uh, it's going to force you to adapt or uh, become extinct like everything that fails to evolve. Like I said, it's an evolving sport and you got to evolve with it, you know. Not only, is it, not only is the sport evolved, but the particular disciplines within the sport. You look at like, you know, Muay Thai 10 years ago and its application in a mixed martial arts context to now. Look at Jiu Jitsu 10 years ago to its application now. The, the particular disciplines within the sport have evolved. Most definitely. I, you know, I read an article online the other day talking about how, you know, jiu-jitsu is uh, fading in MMA. I mean, I, I, I can't disagree, you know, anymore because, you know, jiu-jitsu hasn't gone anywhere. It, it's just evolved that everybody is canceling each other out. You know, it's still there. It's the fact that everybody cancels each other out. Uh, my personal opinion is that so many people have you people have been forced to learn jujitsu because they know how effective it is and you have guys that have become good enough in it where they can neutralize it from the top but even with that being said you run into there with a killer like a damian maya uh, you run into there with a killer uh, like a like a jake shields uh, shinya yoki uh, someone uh, a bj penn when he was in his prime they have the tendency to still be able to finish you regardless of your uh, your talent but I think it was showcased when you seen like a, Ra a Haja Gracie fighting uh, Tim Kennedy that uh, a lot of these guys have caught up in terms of their understanding of jiu-jitsu and its application and mixed martial arts. Most definitely, you know, and oh, there it is. Another, you know what, Drew, we're, we're being treated to some excellent, excellent fights thus far. Six down. I feel like I should be paying them for letting me come watch these fights. You know, six down, nine to go. Hey, hey and, here, and here's the uh, tipper. We haven't even got to any of the title fights yet. Oh, my gosh. And we haven't got to even to our qualifier fights yet. You know, we got next, we got Keith Bullock versus Jerome Otler. That's sure to be a, uh, a quality fight. Both guys are veterans. Both guys have been in their top competitions, have fought against champion le championship level caliber fighters. Both guys are... Both champions. Both guys are extremely athletic, so that'll be a, uh, a another treat for the fans at home. Our yeah. judges have came to a unanimous season. decision here for a score of 29-28 for your winner, George Simos! Simos with the unanimous decision, 29-28. Um, I'm gonna have to agree with that decision. And that look at that sportsmanship, ladies and gentlemen. That's what it's about. That's what it's all about.